Hello, welcome you all in the chemistry of carbonyl compounds. In my today's lecture, I will explain few reactions of uh, few reduction reactions of carbonyl compounds like wolf krishna reduction, then Clementian reduction, and Mirwin Ponwarf Burley reduction method. Now, so let us first come to the wolf krishna reduction. So one of the main thing that it occurs under basic condition. And second one, the driving force for this reaction is the release of N2 gas. Here the driving force is release of release of N2 gas. Now suppose if we have any this carbonyl compound then this in presence of uh, hydrazine and if we heat this one in presence of hydrazine and then if we have a uh, KOH in ethylene in, in ethylene glycol and at around 200 degrees Celsius that is high temperature then this will give you the reduction product it will give you the reduction product where where this carbonyl compound that would be converted into the here in case of this hydro oxygen the hydrogen we will get the Hydrogen. Okay, <clears throat> so if we see in the mechanism for this reaction, then first of all, if we have a so what we have to see, we in the finally the N2 gas that will evolve out. Okay, N2 gas will evolve out, and suppose first we have a hydrazine, then the here the reaction would be similar to that I have I have already discussed and when I uh, I gave the lecture on the imine formation when carbonyl forms the imine then in that case what I told you this carbonyl compound and if we have any in this amines if we have any amines that is mainly primary amines then primary amines it forms the it forms the imine so first we will get the imine so I am writing here directly. We you may see the uh, mechanism for this, and when during my lecture of uh, this imine formation. So this is giving you the hydrazone. So this imine, this uh, hydrazine is finally giving the hydrazone over here. This is the hydrazone. <coughs> okay. Now. This NH2 here, this H here is the one of the H which is the acidic H. This H is the acidic one and that can be removed by the strong base. So here this strong base, here ethylene glycol, it will produce its conjugate base. Ethylene glycol in presence of this KOH, this hydroxide ion, it may take, this hydroxide ion may take the, <coughs> suppose if this is the hydroxide ion, and we have a this ethylene glycol then it can take one of this H and finally you will have a you will have so now so this will take the this is one of the conjugate uh, this is a conjugate base this is a conjugate base of uh, this ethylene glycol and this conjugate base it can take out this H over here and nitrogen is having the negative charge. So what you may write, you may write this one and nitrogen is having negative charge over here. Now we can write the resonance stabilized form of it.
Now, so again we have a, this ethylene glycol. Again we have ethylene glycol, and now it will act as, as a acid. It will act as a acid, and this can this can take this proton from here. And what you may write one of the hydrogen. So we have two hydrogens in place of this carbonyl oxygen. Two hydrogens are added. So here one of the hydrogen is added over here. And now in the same way, in the same way we may add another hydrogen. In the same way we may add another hydrogen. And again the same step that would be repeated. So another hydrogen we have the second hydrogen this second hydrogen and now this uh, conjugate base of ethylene glycol this is the conjugate base of ethylene glycol and it will take this H over here negative charge will come over the nitrogen and you will have a triple bond over this okay now we still it will be having negative charge and now this will <coughs> and as you can see this N2 gas is evolved out and we have a we have negative charge over here we have negative charge over here and in final step again this uh, ethylene glycol will act as an acid and this can take a proton from here and it will get reduced into this okay <clears throat> so so this is the the mechanism for this wolf krishna reduction and now suppose uh, if we write a example where we have a cyclic ketone and here also if we add a same agent that is hydrazine and second one that we may add QH in ethylene glycol and heat at around 200 degrees Celsius then we will have the finally this would be converted into hydrazone and from hydrazone we will get a uh, that would be reduced into So, like this, the reduction, uh, the reduction of this carbonyl compound is taking place. Now, <clears throat> one of the uh, next reaction that we can reduce this carbonyl compound is the Clementian reduction. So here, this reaction it occurs under acidic condition. Under acidic condition, where we use a zinc amalgam is used in HCl. Zinc amalgam is used in HCl. Here, this zinc is electron donor. Zinc is electron donor, whereas whereas this HCl you use that is the H donor. Okay, so now so suppose if we have carbonyl compound is in presence of a zinc amalgam in HCl, so this can reduce this, and here we will are having this hydrogen. Okay, so now if you want to see the mechanism for this, first of all, this in presence of H plus, it would the oxygen would be protonated and 
positive charge is come over coming over the oxygen and in next step we have uh, uh, electrons two electrons which is coming from the the zinc so it may go over here or otherwise what we can write otherwise we may write a uh, suppose the resonance to average for form for this one and if we write this positive charge is coming over here we are having edge and now two electrons from zinc it will go over here so uh, an ion that would be created over here this is the anion which is created now in presence of this hcl and we are one of the you can see one of the hydrogen is added over so we have to add two hydrogens in place of this to oxygen we have to add two of hydrogen over here and and this is negative charge and OH over here. so again in presence of H plus this oxygen is getting protonated and it is having now positive charge and now so it can go out H2O may go out and what you will get? You will get again positive charge and in an electrophilic center is created. Two electrons from zinc it will come over here and we have a negative charge again and then then we have H plus from HCl and like this, like this, this carbonyl compound will undergo reduction and addition of hydrogen is taking place over there. So <clears throat> now, so one of the main application of this uh, Clemenson re uh, reduction, if you will see, so so if you see the application and so suppose if we want uh, to add a N propyl group over the benzene. Suppose if we want to add N propyl, suppose we have a propyl bromide, and in presence of this, suppose Al Br3 as a catalyst. So, what would the product in this case? You actually we get the electrophilic substitution reaction takes place, and in this reaction we get actually the isopropyl group adds over here in place of this propyl group isopropyl group adds over here because we first of all this carbocation is formed and then this carbocation this uh, this pi bond that will interact with this carbocation and finally we will get the uh, isopropyl benzene but you want to if we want to get a n propyl benzene then how can we get this n propyl benzene in that case? So this can be, a, and this can be, we can get this uh, via this Clemenson reduction method. So first of all, what we will do, we will do the, this is our Friedel craft alkylation. This is Friedel, Friedel craft, Friedel craft alkylation reaction. Now we may do the Friedel craft acylation reaction. So during this acylation reaction, so this in presence, uh, we do the Friedel-Craft acylation, Friedel-Craft acylation, and we will we are having here finally be this group that would be attached over here during Friedel-Craft. Now this can be reduced via this Clemenson reduction that is zinc Hg HCl. So this will reduce this one and what you will get, you will get a, we will get now N propyl, N propyl uh, benzene that can be obtained. Otherwise, uh, otherwise here we are all, always we will get the isopropyl benzene. So <coughs> this is uh, about the Clemenson reduction. Now next one is the Bedwin Pondorf Wurley reduction method. Bedwin Pondorf 
early reduction method. So, or we also write it as MPV reduction. MPV. Now, this reaction is the reduction of uh, if we have this carbonyl compound aldehyde or ketone. This aldehyde in ketone that could be now that can be converted into into its secondary. Suppose if we have this ketone, then this ketone that would be converted into secondary alcohol. So this is the secondary alcohol, and here and here. And this in forward direction, in forward direction we are having this Mervin ponder Berle reduction. In backward direction, that is the reversible one, and this can also be converted into ketone, and that is called as the opinor. Okay, okay, this is called as the opinor oxidation. Now, so in this method, we use uh, the reagent that we use, aluminium isopropoxide is used. Aluminium isopropoxide, this is used. Okay. So, this can, I can write this aluminium propoxide. This in use in presence of, in presence of isopropyl alcohol. This is used in presence of isopropyl alcohol. Now, so suppose this aluminium isopropoxide, if we have this aluminium and we have uh, this uh, isopropoxide, so this is one of the this uh, propoxide group. In the same way, we may have a three isopropoxide group. Okay, this is aluminum propoxide, isopropoxide group, or we may write we may write it as a this is the aluminum isopropoxide. Okay, now <coughs> so if you want to write the this mechanism for this reaction, then suppose if we have a ketone. And this ketone, first of all, in presence of this aluminium isopropoxide, okay, so I am writing this aluminium isopropoxide in this way. So, first of all, we have a lone pair over the oxygen, it will go into the this T orbital of this aluminium and vacant d orbital of this aluminium and finally what we may write we may write this one as positive charge will come over this oxygen and we have aluminium over here and isopropoxide group and then we have oxygen and from this oxygen we have two alkyl groups, these two alkyl groups from this oxygen and one of the, this hydrogen is present over here, hydrogen is present over here. Now, so this of aluminium is having this negative charge like this. Now, in next step, if you will see, then one of the six-membered cyclic transition state that would be formed. So, how, so first this aluminium oxygen bond, this will break and it will neutralize the, this negative charge which is present over here. This negative charge that would be neutralized and now so this will this hydride ion this hydride ion this will attack over this electrophilic center and this positive charge is now neutralized. So if you want to write the a six membered cyclic transition state then you may write the six membered cyclic transition state as you can see one of this pi bond is taking down over here and we have this positive charge, partial positive charge 
and this aluminium aluminium from this aluminium we have two isotope oxide group which is attached over here and this bond this aluminium oxygen bond is going to break and here we may see this pi bond new pi bond is going to form and now one of the this hydrogen this okay so this hydrogen this bond is breaking down new bond between this carbon and hydrogen is going to form so like this the six member cyclic transition state is formed and finally what uh, you may see one of this bond finally it will break okay this bond will break and this bond will completely break and what you will get we will get uh, uh, this uh, C ketone this ketone means as you can see uh, this propoxide group this uh, propoxide group this is the propoxide group that is now converted into this ketone and now we have a next part is one of the hydrogen is attached over here this is the one of the hydrogen uh, which is coming from this isopropoxide group so this hydrogen finally one hydrogen as you can see this hydrogen this hydrogen is coming from isopropoxide group as you can see this hydrogen is coming from this isopropoxide group and now uh, now we have this oxygen and from this oxygen this aluminium this aluminium is attached and one and two isopropoxide group are still there isopropoxide group are still there so this isopropoxide group i have written in this way okay <clears throat> so now yes, so negative charge you may write this partial negative charge would be there still in final step now the isopropyl alcohol is there and we have this isopropyl alcohol and this isopropyl alcohol this oxygen having this lone perf electron it will go into the second d orbital of this aluminium and we have now this aluminium is now having three isopropoxide group initially it was having two isopropoxide group now three isopropoxide group aluminium is having the negative charge oxygen is having this positive charge and now this bond will break and finally we have this oxygen the this h plus may come over here and we have a, we have a secondary alcohol we have secondary alcohol and as you can see the ketone is now converted into the secondary alcohol and plus we have this aluminium isopropoxide is again formed over here so this is the product this is the product like this okay